So there's a brand new docuseries that was released recently on Netflix called Cheer. And it has been taking the internet by storm. It's been taking the cheer world by storm, taking Netflix by storm. Everybody is talking about this docuseries. And I've had a lot of people ask me my opinion on it. Friends I used to cheer with, athletes that I work with now, and even people that have never experienced cheer, um, like some of my patients have asked me about my thoughts on this on the docuseries. And so in this episode, we're going to discuss it. There's some things that I really, really love, and there's some things that I truly did not like about this docuseries. I know, funny, everybody's loved this thing, but honestly, there's some things that really struck a nerve with me that I want to share with you guys. But before we do that, smash that like button down below. Help us to trigger the YouTube algorithm to do the magic behind the scenes to help us continue to grow and reach more athletes just like you or parents or coaches, however you fall in the sport. So let's talk about this docuseries. So for those that aren't familiar with it, Cheer is a docuseries about Navarro College up in Corsicana, Texas, which is home of the fruitcake, which I didn't know. I thought was kind of funny. Home of the fruitcake and Navarro College cheerleading. They are, I believe, a 12-time national champion at NCA, and they're a multiple-time grand champion, meaning they got the highest score out of the entire competition, which is incredible. That means across all divisions, they were the highest scoring. This docuseries is designed and was created to highlight their road to Daytona, to NCAA, the highest level competition that they compete at. And there are things about this show that I loved, absolutely loved. I loved the inside perspective that we got to see about the life of a competitive collegiate cheerleader. Some of the biggest names in the sport, some of the cheer liberties, as you guys know them as, are featured on this show, and it really gets, you know, it shows you an, a side of their life that you typically wouldn't see. I love that it, it also shows the hard work that goes into perfecting a routine that you're going to throw at college nationals and NCA, which is incredibly hard, right, as we saw in the show. You know, I also love that it was real. I, I truly felt like it opened the eyes of the public to what our sport truly is about. You know, the athleticism, the determination of our athletes, the skill set that goes into it, you know, the hard work and dedication that they put in on a daily basis, you know, now was shown to some, you know, people that are that are ignorant about our sport and that honestly just don't know. And that's incredible. It, it's, it's truly a blessing, you know, for us for the public to get to see, you know, what we know to be true. But with that comes the bad side. The thing that I really, I don't use this word often, but hated about this documentary. And it was injuries. The first, second, I mean, the whole documentary was so focused on injuries that Coming from someone who works in the healthcare field, it was hard to watch. You know, we know that our sport has a lot of injuries. And that's, I mean, that's why I do the work that I do. That's why, you know, I try to educate you guys on injury prevention and how to rehab from injuries and, you know, really trying to keep our athletes healthy. And this docuseries really highlighted that to the extreme. And I don't think that that necessarily is a bad thing. I think that, honestly, it's kind of a good thing. The part that I don't like is that it, it truly made that program seem like they were lacking in the support they needed for their athletes. They had two amazing athletic trainers that every time an athlete was down, these, these athletic trainers were right there by their side, assessing them, you know, checking on them, making sure that they, um, you know, they were okay. And I commend, you know, these two athletic trainers with my whole heart. I mean, I, I truly applaud them knowing the amount of work that goes into just one of the injuries that was shown on that show, but knowing how many injuries they had to deal with, they were far understaffed. The frustrating part is I understand that there are not a lot of doctors that understand the meticulous management strategy necessary for our athletes. You have to manage cheer athletes differently than you would other athletes. 
So I understand that there's not a lot of, of doctors out there that understand that. But when you have a high-level program like a Navarro, like a West Georgia, or a Moorhead State, or a Kentucky, the list goes on and on. When you have a high, Team USA, for instance, when you have a high-level program like that with athletes that are throwing high-risk skills like they do, to be lacking in medical support for these athletes is truly unfortunate. I don't think that it's done maliciously. I don't think that, you know, the school actively tries to not give the athletes what they need. I don't mean that at all. So it's not to knock on the programs. But what's frustrating is knowing that some of these injuries that these, these athletes faced were far more serious than the show led to belief. What we saw was more quantity of injury. This guy getting hurt, this girl getting hurt, this guy getting hurt, this girl getting hurt. But what the public doesn't understand is how intense and how severe some of these injuries are and what the rehabilitation strategies are for these types of injuries. And instead of highlighting, you know, that they were getting the support they needed, it almost made it seem like, well, you're hurt, keep going. Well, you're hurt, keep going. And that's... You know, I, don't, I, I can't say whether that's 100% how it was or not because obviously these shows take liberty with what they want to portray to the public. But the public perception now is, wow, these cheerleaders got hurt a whole lot. And that sucks. It sucks to know that people that don't know anything about our sport, that's now their viewpoint is, wow, these guys got hurt a whole lot. It doesn't look good on our sport. It doesn't make us look like we're, you know, oh, now all of a sudden we're, higher level athletes because we get hurt a lot. It just looks like something that a lot of people didn't know. The first thing they learned about is, wow, in order to do this at a high level, you're probably going to get hurt a whole lot. And that sucks. And not only are you going to get hurt a whole lot, it doesn't seem like they're really doing a whole lot about it either. And that's worse. So the one thing that really struck a chord with me and struck a nerve was if we're going to portray our sport to the public especially those that know nothing about it in a way that we're trying to shed light on what we do. We need to show more than just how injured they get. And on the flip side of that, it should also bring light that there's not what, you know, for all programs, there's likely not adequate healthcare support for athletes. And our athletes and our coaches and our parents, you guys should demand that. You should demand that your athletes are taken care of by people that understand the sport. Not just, oh, you did something, you're out for six weeks, you can't do anything. That's not what I mean. And so my hope is that from this, we realize that we have a gaping hole in the support for our athletes at all levels, but especially our high level athletes. And that two athletic trainers that are working their tails off may not be enough. And if it's not enough, we need to figure out what the heck is because we need to give our athletes what they deserve. And the public needs to see that even though these athletes do put their bodies through the ringer, that on the backside, they're being supported and taken care of in a way that makes our in, makes our sport safe. It instills confidence in parents and the public that yes, this is something that I would be confident putting my kid in. Because honestly, as someone, you know, if I were watching this docu series completely unbiased and having known nothing about cheer, yeah, it's cool to see what they do. But you got to think a parent would have to be crazy to say, "Yep, yeah, sign my kid up." And that is unfortunately the part that sucks the most. So I would love to hear your feelings on cheer. I'd love to hear your feelings about my concerns about injuries and, you know, your experience with injuries yourself. And if you feel like you were properly supported or if you knew where to go or who to turn to or what resources to, to look for, um, leave that in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts. And if you haven't already hit the like button, if you don't like this video, hit the down, hit the thumbs down button too. I just want to get some feedback from you guys because I know this is a really, really big topic right now in our sport. And 
the only way we're going to get something out of it is to talk about it. Hey, if you like this video and would like more like it, click on the link above. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, click this link right here. Click the bell for notifications so you can stay up to date with our latest videos. We'll catch you on the next one.